Hello everyone and welcome to this week's UK Gaming Network podcast. I'm Zoidberg. The January gaming drought has continued for another week, which is why we jumped at the chance to play Darwin Project again. Which re- uh, This free-to-play, not-quite-battle royale reached full release status after just over 18 months in early access and sees up to 12 players thrown into an ever-shrinking snow-covered arena to scavenge, craft and fight to become the last man standing. The lower number of players and smaller map than its contemporaries actually work in the game's favour making it fresh and keeping matches short. Players are armed with just a bow and an axe, and the latter can be used to gather wood to craft arrows and build fires. Keeping warm is just as important as your combat skills if you want to survive to the end, and there's a decent selection of additional weapons and abilities that you can craft too. Just be aware that every time you stop to build, other players will know where you've been and be able to track you. Getting into a match can occasionally take a bit too long, but it's fun when you do get to play, and it's good that the developers have included an option to play against bots so you can practice. As it's a free download, there's no reason not to give it a go, and you'll be pleased to know that the only things you can spend real-world money on are cosmetic items. Some people still refuse to buy games that are labelled as early access, citing the incomplete status of the game as a reason, and who are we to argue? As far as UKGN is concerned, we don't review games that are still in early access, and any gameplay videos we've made are tucked away in a separate playlist along with demos and betas. It could be said that the whole concept of early access is losing its relevance now anyway. What's the difference between an early development version of a game and a full price release like No Man's Sky that's now a completely different game to what it was at launch? In fact, if Bethesda had stuck an early access label on Fallout 76, there's no way they'd have received as much negative press as they did. While we still have our reservations about how developers use early access, we still have to admit that there have been a number of success stories. For every Radical Heights, there's a Don't Starve, Dead Cells or Pit people. So with that in mind, Here's our five favourite games currently in Early Access. Fortnite. Yes, you heard that correctly. The biggest, most played, most watched and most talked about game in the world is actually still not officially released. This is of course utterly ludicrous. There are full price releases that are nowhere near as polished as this game and yet load it up and you'll find every loading screen emblazoned with the word beta. It has been suggested that the reason it's still classed as early access is because updates don't have to go through the same rigorous certification process before they can be released. That certainly makes sense, but then so does the fact that Save the World mode, the best bit of the game in our opinion, was due to go free to play when it hit full release, and in the meantime they can continue to charge £25 for it. We'll leave you to decide which reason you want to believe. Golf with your friends. We always enjoy a bit of mini golf, and Blacklight Interactive's Golf With Your Friends is one of the most enjoyable video game versions we've ever played, although there are still some areas that need work. It began with seven courses to play, each with a different theme, and this has been increased to ten, including an excellent Worms themed course. The mouse controls are incredibly simple to use, and there are some great holes to play. Some holes could definitely do with a flyby option though, so you know where you're supposed to be aiming your first shot. The way everyone plays at the same time in multiplayer makes for fast and frantic online experience. At the end of the month it will have been in early access for 4 years, and the final release date keeps slipping. You can currently pick it up for less than £3 if you shop around though, and we definitely recommend it. Hades No longer exclusive to the Epic Games Store, Hades is the latest game from Supergiant Games, the small team who made their name with Bastion. It's a roguelike dungeon crawler, which is an overcrowded genre, but it manages to stand out thanks to the same graphical fidelity and well-written characters as the developer's previous offerings. Like all good roguelikes, you discover a little bit more about the mechanics and the lore with each death, and the various weapons and spells you can use offer up new ways to play. It launched into early access in December 2018, and has already received a number of updates. The latest major one is actually due next week. Supergiant have kept the community constantly updated with the game's progress, and have suggested it should take three years to finish. It's already a fantastic game in its current version, and has the potential to be a genuine classic when the full version is released. Quake Champions Two years ago, PC games were all set for the rematch of the century, as new versions of Quake and Unreal Tournament were set to go head-to-head -head once more. Then, Epic Games went and announced that they had stopped development of the latter, leaving ID Software's Quake Champions as the sole option for fans of Classic Deathmatch. All our favourite modes are here, including both variations of Deathmatch and Capture the Flag, as well as the return of fan favourite Instagive from Quake 2. 
new maps, weapons and skins come with each new battle pass, and we've also seen Doomslayer and BJ Blazkowicz as playable characters. None of the monetization is particularly aggressive, although it will take you a long time to unlock the extra characters if you opt not to spend anything. With tight level design, blisteringly quick gameplay and a great selection of weapons, it's everything you'd want from a Quake game. Super Arcade Football By no means the biggest or most well known game on our list, Super Arcade Football nevertheless stuck in our minds from the moment we first played it. We first encountered the game at EGX in 2016, and loved its fast action take on the beautiful game. If Sociable Soccer is the natural successor to Sensible, then think of this as the new version of Kickoff 2. It was already in a releasable state all that time ago, and yet here we are nearly four years later and it still sits in early access. The developers have always been open about what's happening with the game, and recently took time out to finish another game instead and refocus their ideas. Now that that game is out, we should see a lot of progress in 2020, starting with a showing at EGX Resed in March. We can't wait to see what happens next, as this is a game that deserves to find as big an audience as possible. It's also better than FIFA. Super time for our reviews, and there's just a couple of little games for us to talk about this week. Super Crush KO is an action platformer from Vertex Pop, the makers of the excellent Graceful Explosion Machine, and it's another game that disguises its depth beneath layers of dayglow pink and purple. You play as a girl named Karen, who must battle her way through the streets to rescue her kidnapped cat. This means punching and kicking your way through screen after screen of enemies, each with an attack pattern that must be learnt. You're introduced to each new move during the opening few levels, leaving you to concentrate on the enemies for the rest of the game. The combat is not unlike Guacamelee, and you learn to juggle punching, shooting and dodging to rack up the combos. Levels all end with an on-screen rating giving you plenty of incentive to go back and try again. The only real issue is the length, as you can complete it in just a couple of hours, but when it's priced at just a tenner, it's hard to complain too much. The only other game we played this week was Flat Heroes on PS4, which has actually been out on PC since 2016 and came out last year on Switch. This is a game that owes a great debt to the Twitch platformers of old, and your only objective is to stay alive. Visually it's very minimalist, with simple shapes and plain backgrounds, but this means it's incredibly easy to know what's happening even when the screen is full of enemies. Our biggest problem with the game is being forced to press a button to start the next screen every time you finish another. This breaks up the flow a bit too much, and stops us from enjoying it as much as we wanted to. If you fail a screen, the restart is instant, and it would have been great if the levels continued in the same way. It's one of those rare games that actually has a demo, so you can try it out for yourself. It's well worth playing, even if it's just for the survival mode. Now it's time to finish the show with our new feature, looking back at games that were released exactly 10 years ago. Following on from a pretty decent original in 2008, Army of Two The 40th Day hit stores on January the 15th 2010 and it's an early example of how easily EA can mess up a good franchise by misunderstanding what players wanted from them. Where they should have been concentrating on the good parts of the first game, like the excellent aggro system that forced players to work together, they instead doubled down on all the excess and masculinity. Any good features that the game had, such as the excellent weapon modification, were too easily lost in a sea of explosions, swearing and attitude. It's a shame because we actually quite liked the first game, but stop playing this one after a couple of levels out of boredom. There's a full gameplay clip of this game on our channel if you want to remind yourself of it. Follow the link in the description. And that brings us to the end of another show. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you give us a like and subscribe if you did. Do you play games that are still in early access? If so, what are they? Tell us all about them in the comments. We'll be back next week with a look at the new game in the Dragon Ball series, and any other new games that cross our path. If you want to keep up with everything that we're doing and playing, follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at UK Gaming Network. Until next time, thanks for listening. See you soon.